Greetings, what is up and a very warm welcome to the channel, the sun is shining and the magpie is casting. Coming at you right now with a live one versus one battle featuring spawning in the east. It is going to be the austere forces of level 5's gentle fox. And spawning in the west, it is going to be the United States forces of SOE's overlord. Uh, so, yes indeed. Oh, um, the map here is going to be Bombarded Refinery, which uh, this is actually the first time this map has featured on the channel. This is a community map, of course, created by Trick. That is what I read when it was loading. So, massive credit to Trick. Thank you very much for designing this map. It is uh, clearly sweet enough to have made the ladder. I haven't actually had the uh, pleasure of playing this map myself yet, um, but uh, well, let's have a little pan around and we'll get an idea of what's going on in this map. Looks uh, reminiscent of Stalingrad insofar as it's quite a claustrophobic, uh, small, confined map. Heavily built up, lots of line of sight restrictions and, uh, you know, a ruined building sort of feel uh, going on with this map. Uh, so we'll have to see what these two players are going to make of this map. Gentle Fox, of course, he, uh, he, I, he, he featured in my previous cast. What are these pioneers doing? Somehow they've managed to spread the hell out. That is a long way to be spread. Um... But yeah, uh, Gentle Fox featured in my previous cast, and, uh, you know, I think Gentle Fox slightly misleading. Brutal bludgeoning Sledgehammer Fox might be more appropriate, but, uh, you know, maybe that's his whole shtick. Maybe he's like Sucker Punch Fox, maybe he's like, oh, I'm just a Gentle Fox. Hadouken! Maybe that's his style. Um, anyway, yeah, clearly a very talented and uh, capable player. We uh, saw him previously playing as OKW, so it looks like he's uh, branching on out into uh, Ostia today. Have to see what he's going to be able to bring to the table. And, uh, what? Okay. Map. What? Okay, I'm sorry, buddy. You are getting reported for cheating, because this is not legit. You are not allowed to just... Okay, good. I'm glad he stopped. You are not allowed to just levitate above the street and hose down Tommies with your ineffective MP30 at that range. That is... Wow. What a crazy thing. There is some crazy shit going on with this squad, for sure. Um, anyway... Uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, that's right, yeah, so, um, so Gentle Fox, yeah, he, he featured in the previous cast, uh, he was playing OKW then, he, when he was loading, I saw he only has one commander on his roster, so rather telegraphing that to his opponent what exactly he's going to pick, it is of course going to be the Blitzkrieg Doctrine, Pan's Attack, Tactical Movement, Reconnaissance, Overflight, Command Tank, and uh, Stuka Close Air Support going to be the things that he has available there. Nice all-round commander. Uh, no heavy option, though, so he is going to be committing himself to the Ostia Tech Tree here. We're going to have to see how that's going to work out for him. Often a dubious proposition. Many a time we see players uh, opt for a commander who can at least provide them with uh, a Tigre. Um, I, suppose, I suppose he can break out the Tech Tree a bit and grab a P4 command tank, so maybe this means that he can grab that and, and, and like, leapfrog onto Tech 3. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what the plan is going to be here. Mixed skirmishes already erupting across the map as we are now three and a half minutes in, so I ought to be focusing on the action. Uh, looks like Gentle Fox declining to go for a sniper at this point. Two squads of Grenadiers, uh, Flammenwerfer Pioneers, uh, regular Pioneers, and an MG42 going to form the uh, backbone of his roster here. Uh, and he actually seems to be muscling through a fight in mid, which is pretty rare, even forcing back the Yankee Mortar here. Uh, which there are two of now. My god, is this just like mortar spam season? Because uh, this kind of happened last game as well. Gentle Fox are clearly quite used to dealing with these tubes. If only Overlord knew what he's getting himself in for here. Uh, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, I'm going to crack the tack here just to highlight the immense amount of map control that Gentle Fox has been able to leverage as Ost here against USF. Now, I don't think you could do this if your opponent hadn't gone for two tubes. Uh, the doppel tube, if you like. Uh, I think if your opponent has, like, two additional rifle squads here, uh, you have a much harder time controlling the map in this way. But uh, Gentle Fox here getting off to a very quick triple cap uh, with double muni. Uh, so he's going to have all the juicy... He's getting plus 53 muni. That's, um, it's insane. So And that's really good, obviously, because uh, Ostia, one of those factions that lives or dies on its muni. So um, that's going to be pretty cool for him there. Uh, where are these mortar tubes? Oh, they're just clustering up. We've got a cluster tube going on here. And uh, well, speaking of clustering, actually, Gentle Fox would do well to spread his squads a little here. Uh, looks like uh, up in the north here, these pioneers are going to get displaced. These rear echelons going to do their thing <coughs> in the building. Actually, having said that, what is... What, what? This is... Everything is normal. Everything is normal. That's just... Everything is normal. Um, so it looks like uh, GR34 going to be moving on out to the field here. Possibly... Gonna try and answer those Yankee mortars. There's a brave, there's a brave GR34 that tries to answer two Yankee mortars. But you know what? If they're this clustered, it can definitely do it. Uh, so we'll have to see. Uh, we're just gonna have to see how those barrages pan out here. I think. Uh, let's just quickly check the tech here for G Fox. Yeah, so he's got Tech One. No sign of the Leichtermech company yet, but I imagine that will be following here. 
momentarily as soon as he has some pioneers on the fullback. Actually, he has some pioneers on the fullback right now, so probably going to see that tech building coming down sooner rather than later. Overlord here, going to make a grab here, going to try and grab himself a VP, which he desperately needs to do. He's being bled out considerably here, down at 415 under 453. Pretty weird position for, an, uh, for a USF player to be in, but I mean, you know, it does happen, especially when you're playing against Gentle Fox. Uh, these exchanges seem to be going quite well here for Gentle Fox. MG42 set up with a very spicy arc, catches two squads in the arc. Grenadiers here push forward to clean up with mortar support, looking very nice. Now the Yankee mortars have to GTFO. Opportunity perhaps for a rifle grenade there. But uh, I think I don't think it was I don't think it was a real opportunity. I think that that was that was a fakey rifle grenade. If your opponent was a little sluggish, maybe. But uh, opting not to waste the time there. Here comes the captain though. So tech has been chosen here for the American player. Going to be going for the captain. Uh, this is pretty duriga. This is very standard. I think I think definitely American players probably, in my experience, having watched as many games as I have and played as many games as I have. Uh, American players probably go for the captain. It's like 75-25 captain versus lieutenant on average. That seems to be the breakdown. Although, I, have, I don't know, like these days it feels like it may even be like 80-20. Basically, the captain captain takes pride of position in the uh, in the American tech tree. Does, does tend to uh, outstrip his lieutenant counterpart most of the time. Um, <coughs> looks like we got Panzergrenz coming up. So that, like the mechanized company, has finished. Panzergrenz here going to be the choice for Gentle Fox. And I do quite like this. The Panzergrenz, of course, effective against all these units up here in the top right, having some nice elite infantry. To dominate the mid-range engagements is going to be quite good, and of course, when you've got this many Muni, uh, you can look for that Bundle Grenade of Destiny, and uh, since the Bundle Grenade was fixed, it is now quite dangerous. So, um, what is this little spicy Captain action here? Going to be grabbing a VP here. Actually, this Captain completely unanswered, and he does have access to a Muni and a Fuel Point in the hood here. So, uh, I imagine Gentle Fox is going to have to task someone with pushing the Captain out of that area of the map here at some point. Oh my goodness me, this MG42 here is just... It's, it's getting some great hits, and the Mortars are kind of prioritizing this GR34, which is taking hits, actually. Gentle Fox needs to pay attention here. These Riflemen doing their best. Oh, Grenadiers here coming round. Managed to force back one of the Mortar squads, and this is Gentle Fox's way of dealing with Mortars. He just relentlessly assaults and progresses towards that position until the Mortars are forced back. And uh, obviously that removes the Mortars from the firing, you know, from a firing position for the next minute or so, whilst they have to run back to the base and then run back. And, uh... And, you know, occasionally, as we've seen in previous games now, uh, oh, Rifle Grenade comes through, but uh, it is a miss. But, uh, yeah, as we've seen in previous games, uh, Gentle Fox is pretty good at uh, not only forcing them back, but occasionally killing and looting those uh, those Yankee tubes if, they don't, if they're not paying attention. So, uh, yep, I wonder if he's... Yeah, he does fall back, that mortar squad. It was pretty wounded. This captain, as I was uh, saying, though, still getting value for Overlord down here. And remember, this does count as connected. Like, you can see this, like, tenuous little bit of territory does actually connect here. So uh, he will get benefit from this fuel as soon as it's switched on, not just denying it from uh, uh, from a uh, gentle fox here. Overlord going to be taking that fuel for himself. Here come the uh, here come the uh, whoa early Shreks. That is early as I think if you've got the muni for the Shreks, I like floating it. If you if you've been as dominant on the field as you have been here, I think I like floating it because you want the SDGs at this stage, and then you can you can take the uh, the the Shreks a little bit later. I mean, like this would be. I don't know, it feels like, it feels like, I mean, he knows that there's got to be a, uh, a Stuart coming, so I, I guess I don't mind getting the Shreks here, but, uh, I don't mind floating it just for, like, another 30 seconds so you can have that squad be, like, more active on the front line engaging infantry targets, is, I guess, what I'm saying. MG42 here, taking a few hits from the mortar, gonna have to GTFO, and, uh, these two Yankee mortars just kind of taking up pride of position here in the middle of the map. Standard stuff here, I guess, from Overlord. <clears throat> Clearly a man, I think, who's, uh, done this particular dance before. The enemy Sorry, is just adjusting my mic here. <clears throat> Looks like some grenadiers down here. Uh, I didn't actually catch the fight with the captain, but uh, they did force him back. He's now in base and he in. And they're going to try and take back the, uh, the south of the map here. Going to start with that fuel point, that crucial fuel point. Whoa! Gentle Fox even grabbing like this fuel point in the north. That is... Woo! I've, whoa! Okay, I've just discovered that the side buttons on the side of my mouse, like, control the zoom. That's kind of cool, I guess. Um, I've just never used that ever, lol. Anyway, uh, so, wow. Oh dear, these Panzergrens getting caught out in a terrible position here. Yeah, Insty flash fallback coming down here from Gentle Fox. Gonna salvage all of those guys, I think. And, uh, Medical Bunker is up, so they're gonna be able to heal. Actually, there's a few units here that are just stacked up actually and that represents actually four units that represents like at least half the army here for gentle fox and you can see the vacuum of force on the front line is enabling uh 
US player, uh, Overlord. God, I should I should be able to remember at least the player names. Come on, Magpie. Uh, it's going to enable Overlord here to uh, to grab the middle of the map here. And uh, here comes a Stuart as well. Um, <clears throat> but it looks like we're going to have some action here as Rifleman going to take the brunt of the uh, recruit, rearmed, reinforced, ready to rock uh, Ostia forces. A lot of squads just piling on through this area of the map. Second squad of Panzergrands. Okay, it's, it's starting to make slightly more sense how come the... Oh, Stuart's here, by the way. It's starting to make slightly more sense how come he went for those Shreks so quickly on the first Panzergrand squad. If your, if your plan was to grab a second Panzergrand squad and keep them on STGs, that does make a lot of sense. I actually think this is a really good Panzergrand map, actually. A lot of mid-range engagements, a lot of claustrophobic areas for those STGs and those bundle grenades to do a lot of good, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I do like the picks here uh, from uh, from Gentle Fox. I'm just going to... It's getting a little bit cold in here. I'm just going to put on another layer. There we go. So now, I've got an uh, extended skirmish going on here in mid. This is Stuart. Could rance forward a little bit. There's an AT gun as well finished for the uh, for the uh, for the American player here. So Overlord's going to have some AT power. Not that he needs it just yet. Let's just quickly check the tech here. So yep, tier two has gone up, and it looks like the support armor core is being constructed here. So uh, Gentle Fox with designs to opt for a P4 Ostwind or a Stug for sure here. Uh, this seems like a good Ostwind map actually. Faust comes through here. Grenadier's going to run away. Uh, we've got Panzer Shrek. Uh, uh, Panzer Grenadiers coming on in. Oh, wow, cool. Tactical movement gets used here. Oh, my God, but they get gibbed on the corner. So they stay for two shots, and that should be an insty fallback, I feel. Oh, my God, they're going to strafe around like most and try and uh, try for some more, maybe? Oh, I don't know. This seems so risky. Gentle Fox, man. You play with fire. Uh, Panzer Grand's also engaging here, but I think this is the real story. This is such an expensive unit, and they're just clustering up in front of a Stuart. He desperately wants this next barrage of Shrek rounds. Oh, and he gets the Stuart off of it. Gentle Fox, your game sense is spot on, sir. Spot on. Um, <clears throat> so that's a big swing. He actually takes out the Stuart with these wounded Panzergrens. I'm sure every time that's me playing, like my clustered two-man Panzergren just get like one hit by a Stuart shell there. I'm pretty sure that's what happens when I do that. Maybe I should just rename myself Gentle Fox because as far as I can tell, that's the only difference between us. That and the obvious skill differential, lol. Uh, so anyway, S minefield up here in the north going to get defused by some rear ash. So uh, SOE Overlord doing his best to keep his house in order here. Um, Let's take a look at the scoreline. So 3-2-6 for Overlord under 4-2-1 for Gentle Fox. Good God, this man is brutal, isn't he? He just has that killer instinct. You can just tell from watching him play he's very good at RTS, isn't he? Uh, and uh, Anyway, MG42 getting set up in a reasonable position. Going to suppress the captain. Grenadiers coming in from the rear for a little bit of a flank op. And uh, oh, rifle grenade coming out here just to force a fallback. Not going to catch anyone because, uh, well, you know, that fallback was indeed forced. And now it looks like Gentle Fox marshalling control of mid again. And um, Ostia is a very swingy faction, you know. They're very strong when they're pushing out from the base, coming out with their pokey powerful weapon teams and pokey powerful Ostia squads. But then, you know, it doesn't take them very long for these squads to get ground down. They're only four men, they are quite fragile, and then you have to fall back, and the base is, you know, quite a long way away, and then you have to wait to heal at the base if you really, really, really want to come back out with full strength. So, I... Ostia Aust actually are a faction with a number of, you know, in-field reinforcement solutions. They have the half-track, they have the command bunker. Uh, oh, that mortar just getting a four-man squad wipe. Blah, 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 blah. These poor geezers just insty gibbed there. And that is unfortunate and unlucky for Gentle Fox there. But, uh, you know, that's the nature of playing against two US tubes. And, uh, wow, one of those 2009 kills, two stars of Vec. And another decent hit on these uh, pioneers. But as I was saying, Ostia do have a number of... Yeah, on-field reinforcement options, and I'm always amazed by the fact that, uh, you know, all Ostia players who are any good at the game just completely decline to use them. Uh, I myself do enjoy using a half-track from time to time for some mobile pushing pressure. I mean, it lets you tighten the noose, because when you're dominating the field like this, it sucks when you have to fall back and give it up again. So I quite like being able to just kind of be mobile, be pushy. Plus, you can do other things with that half track. You know, you can put um, you can put up to two squads in it. You can transport them around, which actually can be useful as long as you're careful with that ability. Uh, and of course, if you really need to, you can upgrade it to the flamethrower, which I know removes the reinforcement option. But it, it, it's a thing you can do with it. And um, you know, I always keep the Jaeger armor doctrine on my uh, on my roster, so that enables you to lay regal anti tank mines, which are bloody hilarious when you get a hit with them. Your opponent just like does this massive double take, like what the my tank is now utterly screwed. It's lovely. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know. I'm a half-track user. Um, so whatever. 
Uh, we got a little skirmish going up here in the north. Oh, it's not a skirmish quite yet. Oh, yeah, maybe it is. Ray Rash here just getting caught out. So it looks like uh, Gentle Fox going to reign supreme in the north. Panzergren's just continuously pushing here. Oh, my God. The, the weapon teams. The weapon teams. And these Panzergren's getting four squads to have to displace and, and, and stop firing, stop being aggressive. So Gentle Fox, again, this is his way of dealing with mortar tubes. And Ostia players who are struggling with U US mortars, I guess he could learn a lot here from Gentle Fox. All you have to do is just keep pushing at them. Anytime you get units proximal to those mortar tubes, the, you, you stop those tubes from firing, you stop them from being efficient, you stop them from damaging your dudes, and that gives you more momentum to keep pushing. So it's clearly worth it to take a couple of losses here and there to get up on top of those tubes. Um, anyway, Panzer IV is here, and we've got the super spicy and sick uh, Halloween camo here. Credits to Rita uh, for uh, designing these skins. I was going to give her a shout out in the last video, but I wasn't 100% sure that she did all of the Halloween skins, so I just wanted to you know, be sure before I gave a shout out. Uh, but yay, thanks Rita for making some awesome skins. By the way, Rita, for those of you who don't know, is also the person who made my channel art. Every time you come onto the channel, that banner with the magpie and the cool tanks and stuff, that's all Rita right there. So uh, yeah, she's pretty talented at what she does for sure. Um, let's see. Um, okay, so yeah, Panzer IV is here. That's going to be the choice for Gentle Fox. I, that, that for me represents a pretty sensible choice. Yeah, this is a reasonable, uh, a reasonable Oswin map, but... Uh, I don't know. Panzer IV is kind of almost as good as an Oswind against infantry anyway. Uh, and it provides a lot of other utility. So I, I, I still like the pick. LMG42 is beginning to appear on the Grenadiers. Pretty standard stuff, I guess. Especially for someone who's been as muni-rich as Gentle Fox has. Uh, so that's pretty good. And he's still maintaining this brutal triple cap. Like, this is becoming a real problem for SOE Overlord. Like, look at his... He's at 210. We're only 16, nearly coming up to 17 minutes in this game. Oh, God. Panzer Grenadiers here pushing in the north. And I kind of feel like Gentle Fox just getting the better end of, like, all the engagements... I'm seeing and there are a lot of engagements going on like in north mid and south at the moment uh oh my god what was that that just got wiped was that the captain no was that rifleman uh, a squad just got wiped here but my eyes were elsewhere as is often the case lol um oh my god these panzergrens are even just gonna destroy the the at gun on their on their way out so no recruiting of that looks like rangers on the field now so heavy cav company is gonna be the pick here for overlord and i do like this but he's gonna need to stabilize and fast uh, now, I do like the Rangers, actually. Looking at this map, this is a good Ranger map. Like I was saying, for the same reasons that it's a pretty good uh, Panzergren map, it's a pretty good Ranger map. I mean, I know Rangers like to be a little bit closer than Panzergrens, but the two units do tend to thrive in areas like this where there's a lot of line of sight blockers and so forth. Oh, uh, AT gun just like... Just, just not quite pointing the right way. I mean, so this Panzer IV escapes a hit there. It does reposition, but of course this uh, Panzer IV is just going to back off around the corner here. Flammer worth for Pioneers and a lot of force coming in here. But it looks like, look at Gentle Fox's respect. He sees the Captain, Rifleman, Rangers, AT gun. Immediately knows he has to kite back. Lure the enemy forces out into this beautiful concave. Look at this concave of force that Gentle Fox has. And now the American forces are just feeding on in. Feeding on into the killing zone. It's like a meat grinder here. And it's going to take a lot of American bodies to get through. And I'm not sure that Overlord has enough. Look at these Panzer Grenadiers getting all cocky up here. Oh, okay, yeah, they do fall back. That was risky, actually. That mortar could have been a white. But whatever. It doesn't come through here. And I suppose Gentle Fox has already had his mortar unlock. And look, yeah, there we go. Everybody has to fall back. And, like, all of the American units, except for one, are pretty much on this screen. That one is some rear ash up here doing some work in the north. 132 under 421. Gentle Fox right now just crushing it. Just crushing it. Bing. Okay, now his Panzer IV gets tagged by a rifle grenade. That's kind of annoying. Now he's going to have to think about repairing them. Uh, that. Another AT gun here gets taken out by some savvy focus fire off the Panzer IV and the Trek uh, Panzer Grands. And Gentle Fox. Ugh. I mean, he's clearly a player who's been getting his practice in recently. He has been absolutely hooning it. It's mortar tube going up to three stars. And there's going to be a moment of quiet here whilst Gentle Fox falls back to uh, lick his wound. So what I'm actually going to do is just cheeky quick time, alt tab. I just want to see if Gentle Fox is, uh, what, what his ranking is with um, Ostiers here a second. Da -da 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 -da, just going to... Oh, he's... Uh, hmm, okay. All right, well, okay. I, I'm, I'm not going to spend very long looking. Okay, I'm back on it now. I just wanted to see if he was like in the top ten or something, but he's not. But yeah, he's, uh, he's looking like a pretty damn strong player here. <clears throat> Let's see. So these Rangers are going to get a flank on an MG42, but there's Grenadiers here with an LMG42, which should put pay to them. I mean, there's only three of them left now. Oh, here comes a cooked elite rifle grenade. Oh, bing, but Gentle Fox just out of there. No chance he's getting hit by that. Panzer IV just getting repaired in situ, so that thing's still firing. Oh, good mortar hit on the MG42, though. We'll force that one back, I imagine. Um, 
Oh my goodness me, Gentle Fox here just putting on a, a good display here. But okay, so finally Overlord sneaks some riflemen down to the south. They're going to grab a Muni and uh, crucially a VP up in the north, also grabbing a VP. So this game isn't over yet. Uh, Overlord does stop the bleed here for a second. And this Panzer IV is going to have to GTFO. Not much force actually, not much Axis force left on the field here. Oh, rifle grenades! Rifle grenades and LMG42s. Damn, damn, these grenadiers just being turbo annoying here. Pushing back weapon teams wherever they can. Um... But, uh, yeah, as I was saying, this game not over. Not over for sure. Overlord still, you know, he's got a good army, plenty of veterancy, nice composition. If he can just take the field for a second or two here, uh, he'll be uh, he'll be right back in this. But, I mean, oh my goodness. Gentle Fox just immediately pushes the uh, Yankee units out of the south. Uh, he's going to start re retaking that VP momentarily here, I'm sure. And uh, with 78 tickets left, I, I just don't quite know if Overlord's going to be able to last much longer in this game. Oh, that's a grenade there. Insty fallback on the Grenadiers. Going to probably save that squad, or at least save them from a lot of uh, pain and agony there. So uh, nice fallbacks there from Gentle Fox, which, by the way, when was the last time we saw him just honestly leave a squad out to die through inattention? Like, this man seems to be everywhere at once with the micro, and that's that's how you have to be. That is what KOTU asks of you. Uh, and uh, and if you can achieve that, then um, you look pretty spicy. Looks like uh, we got a P4 command tank coming on here, just going to be bolstering the line. And I like this choice because, of course, it, remember, it gives the defensive buff to all of the Axis units nearby, or well, all of the Ostia units nearby. Actually, I'm pretty sure it does boff your buff. Your, it does boff? No, it buffs your uh, OKW allies as well, I think, in like 2v2, 3v3, so on. Um, but anyway, that represents a solid choice because all, all, all that Gentle Fox wants to do right now is hold the, the middle line of the map. And uh, his ability to do that is primarily defined by the durability of his uh, of his units. And uh, oh, a grenade comes down, but it doesn't kill that MG. What? Uh, but yeah, so by buffing the durability of those units, he'll be able to hold the middle line of the map for a little bit longer. And he doesn't need to hold it for much longer before uh, SOE Overlord is not a player in this game. So that's uh, that seems like a good line of play here, and I do like pursuing it. Good God, there's action going on like all over the place, by the way. I'm just frantically trying to pan across all these fights. Oh, three-star rifle squad goes down to the three-star Panzergrenz. There could be another squad wipe coming down here. Gentle Fox is going to give pursuit with the Panzergrenz. This guy's on one hit now. He's taking fire from a... Blah! Yeah, he's taking fire from a number of squads, and he will go down. And with that, I think SOE's Overlord's chances in this game probably have been extinguished. Now, here does come a Pershing. Uh, so uh, we're going to have to see if it's going to be able to achieve much. Hit. No, not, okay, there we go. Pershing here going to uh, boost on in. Does this count as road? That looks really fast. Uh, Panzer IV Command Tank just being absolutely cheeky AF here. LOL! Look at this guy! Just pinging down these mortar squads. LOL! And then the Pershing's just like, I'm going to come chase you away. And the Panzer IV Command Tank like, ha ha ha, you can't catch me! That is just some sweet micro here from uh, Gentle Fox pulling his opponent apart here. Triple cap at the moment still established. Um, and I just don't think there's actually enough time for any uh, for, for any American units to make it onto these three VPs and cap them. So that will be game. I, I am almost certain that that is game. I mean, well, I'm certain that that is game. Wow. God, that Gentle Fox getting another game over in like... Kind of close to the 20 minute mark. Who says KOTU, like average game length is too long? Not Gentle Fox, that's for sure. It's just He's just taking names with Axis out here on the ladder. Okay, so the Pershing is probably going to get this P4. Uh, but that's immaterial because, uh, you know, this Gentle Fox is going to get this Overlord. Boom, there we have it. Keep the playback over. GG, my friend. Gentle Fox just putting on a convincing display. A convincing display of Ostherery. Ostherery, that's a word now. Um, yeah, Vermactory. This man's Vermactory is pretty good. <laughs> I, I am increasing my vernacular with words like Vermactory. It's good fun. Anyway, um, I, yeah, I, I don't really know what to say. Um, Ostia players do this. Uh, Gentle Fox has it down. Like, th that was just sweet plays. There was, there was just cool tech, cool timings, cool positioning, cool strats. Like, I didn't, I just, I didn't, I don't, I don't think I saw him do anything that I wasn't quite impressed with. Um, it's been quite a long time since I've, since I've, since I've cast, like, play on this level, it feels like. Like, Gentle Fox is just a monster. And, I mean, he came into this with just one commander, so clearly, like, it's Blitzkrieg or bust for him. Like, that's how he lives or dies. 
um, which is awesome. I mean, and let's see, so what did he really use? I mean, he had Pan's attack available, did never see it get used, but I mean, it's always nice to know the buttons there. Tactical movement actually secured him a kill on a, uh, on a, on a, on a Stuart, so that's quite big. Uh, and this is just a really cool ability. I mean, for 40 Muni, it just, like, it gives all of your dudes a 20-second, like, you know, stim movement buff, which is pretty useful, actually. Um, one of the most underrated Ostia abilities, probably this one. Uh, uh, the Recon Overflight, we never saw it used, but, I mean, if you... It, it can be useful. Uh, we don't often see it get used at the high levels of play. You can usually deduce what your opponent is up to if you're good enough at this game, which Gentle Fox apparently is. But it can be useful as a double checker if you really want to see what the what the choice of tack was, or if you really want to know exactly which uh, which way they've sent their vehicles so that you can respond appropriately. Then the uh, the reconnaissance overflight can be worthwhile. The P4 command tank we did see get used, and I think it was a sensible choice at the time it was clicked. And uh, the Stuka close air support. Well, we didn't see that, but we've seen it before we know how devastating it is and uh, if any situation got out of control here gentle fox could have uh, slammed that one down to help him uh, help him out a little bit so i i mean clearly the commander pick was good and it worked and it was spicy for overlord i do like the heavy cav company pick i do like it on this map but uh i mean oh, wow what do you do in the face of such reckless gentle foxing i mean i i just i mean i'm i'm trying to think of what he could have done better or worse i've got to be honest right this is two games we've seen the double mortar tube opening, uh, and I suppose the previous game it was like a more than double mortar tube opening. But this is this is a couple of games where we've seen American players rely heavily on mortars at a very early stage in the game, and I I just don't know about that if I'm honest. Um, I I think it can dominate players, but I think players of a certain caliber just know how to deal with it. Like mortar tubes are very very potent, but they do represent soft targets. Like they are weak spots. Where every time you buy a mortar tube, you are purchasing a weak spot, which if your enemy is ever able to get anywhere close to, is gonna be issues for you. Um, so you know, although both of these mortar tubes went off 15 kills on one, nine on the other, six stars of veterancy between them is pretty nice. Uh, but um, I think I think investing in weak spots at that early stage in the game, you know, because as soon as an enemy squad gets on top of them, you have to fall them back, then bring them out. So they basically get like nullified for like a minute every time you have to, you know, move them or, or fall them back, as it were. Uh, and Gentle Fox is so au fait with doing that. I just don't really think that these mortars were really worth getting that early. Also, one other point about mortars, which... Um, I just think that Overlord could have spread his mortars out. Trouble with having two mortar tubes, like, more or less on top of each other. There are a number of problems with that. But the main one is that if your opponent gets access to one of your mortar tubes, you end up having to fall them both back. If you spread them out a bit, like, if you have one here and one here, then you're kind of covering the same area. Uh, but it means that if, if one mortar tube gets attacked, uh, the other mortar tube can kind of help it a bit. But you only have to fall one of them back. Um, so... I don't know. I just think generally, as a rule of thumb, I tend to try to spread my indirect fire units out because, and this, I, this I've learned from like using like GR34s and Ligs and and you know all kinds of mortars over the years of I've been playing Company of Heroes. I just generally prefer to spread my mortars out like at least half a screen's width, like preferably a screen's width apart. Just because it makes it much more difficult to assault your position, it makes it much more difficult to switch off your squads by getting on top of them. Um, and i don't know i it just I, it's just it's a small point but basically this entire game these two mortars were very predictably positioned and quite clustered in in this area uh all of this game more or less and i think gentle fox just you know got a good read on that and was just able to consistently push them away so uh that that did hamper the amount of value that they could provide and that probably because they were such an early investment you know this is a lot of manpower to have uh turned off for a lot of the game because gentle fox kept on pushing them around so I think if you go for the mortars this early and your opponent keeps pushing them back, do spread them out. Don't keep putting them in the same place so he knows exactly where they are. I know this is a nice place to have mortar tubes. I know from here they can like fire and be really annoying in a large area of the map. But like I say, just spread them out a little bit. Put put one back behind these cars. Put one back behind this wall or something. Or you know just or or if it's really paramount that you have them this far forward, I don't know. Like put one here on this on this corner here and like one I don't know like here or here. Like even that much spread makes it just a little more hard to deal with um so anyway that 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 i would say is is one thing that i think overlord could have done differently and i i'll say it again i don't think i like going for two mortars that early i because because riflemen are so good and i think as the american forces if you don't have map control early on you have a really hard time in the mid and late game like you I think American players are used to having map control early to give them that resource buff to put them in 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 the lead in terms of the score. And I think if you don't, I think if you decline that with USF, you are signing up for quite a hard time. 
Um, so anyway, those are just my thoughts on this game. Um, and yeah, I mean that 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 I think that I think concludes this video. Um, thanks very much for watching. And uh, this for now is Magpie A42 signing out.